So in this part, I'd like to create a game over screen when the player dies, um, just keeping it pretty simple and responding to an event. And uh, then I guess we can have like a restart game button or something like that in place of like a main menu. But before that, I do want to take this game stats canvas, uh, go into it where we have the game stats panel, and I'm going to make the panel less transparent. So if we take the theme in the game, the defaults, and I'm going to add a panel item type, then we're going to want to take the panel color, which is under the panel tab for style box flat. So we'll add that as a property we can edit, open up, I think style box flat. Yep. Okay. And then we can change the background color that we have by default. And then that will include the alpha as well. So it won't show right here because the game stats is currently not on the main gameplay window. But if I go to gameplay, it should update for that. So we hit play. Okay, we can see that it's uh, only lightly transparent. So we can increase or decrease the transparency as we need with this background color. I might want it to be a little bit more solid even. So we hit play again, test it. Okay, it's pretty easily visible no matter what's under it on the screen. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, now we can start on the game over. So for the game over on our player, uh, we emit when it dies through the combat state. So that would be a pretty easy way to uh, throw in a game over scene. If I edit the resource and then edit the combat state script, uh, we can see that that occurs when an object that's player type dies. If there's only going to be one player object in the game, uh, that should probably be fine. So player deaths will increment, but we might not want to respond directly to the player deaths changed signal because that value can be set uh, outside of report death occurring. So what we might want is another signal for game over and I'll admit that down here when the player deaths increments. So let's say game over dot emit. Okay, so then when a death is reported, we do the game over signal. And from that game over signal, we can have a UI pop up. So we'll need to create a game over UI. It'll probably be something like a panel. So I'll change this control type to a panel that will cover the whole screen. But let's do a theme override and give it a style box of pure black. That way, when it fades in, it'll just completely cover everything. So this will be the game over panel. I'll save it in the UI and also rename this node game over panel. Let's give it a script. Okay, and inside of the script, we're gonna need a reference to the combat state. So export var combat state, type combat state. We'll quick load that from the project and the inspector. Okay, and when we assign it, we want to make sure that we connect to its signal. So set value, combat state equals value. So we can say if is instance valid combat state, Yep, combat state, then we'll connect to its game over signal, game over, and let's actually disconnect here. So on game over, and then we copy and paste this below when we set the new combat state and make it a connect. Okay, now we need the function on game over. So that's where we're going to show the UI. And actually, as a result, uh, I think I want this node to always be active, the panel itself will actually be a child of this. So I'm going to right click and attach a panel underneath it, which is going to have that theme override. So style box flat, pure black, and then the root node would just be a control. Okay, so I'll take this control, I'll change the type to a control. And, and that way we can show and hide the panel from within the script. Uh, when you call show on a script that is hiding, from within the script, if I remember right, it just won't trigger because hiding the panel also uh, temporarily stops the code from executing. Uh, I, I think that's how it worked. So this is like a just in case we will always have the game over panel showing, but the panel under it will not be. So I'll just actually call this game over UI and then the panel is under it. So we need a reference to the panel. So we'll say at export of our visible UI, any type of control. What we're going to set that to is going to be the panel, of course. So on game over, the visible UI is going to show. And then on ready, function underscore ready, we're going to say visible UI dot hide. Okay, now we can click on game over UI, assign the panel as the visible UI. 
and that'll pretty much be the basics. So let's hit play and see if we can get a game over to occur. And you know what? I'm going to increase the enemy damage temporarily. So uh, weapon stats enemy or invader collision weapon stats, which would make it 50 damage. So uh, I guess going Super Nintendo Mario where you die in two hits. Yep. Okay. So there we had the death occur and we did not get the game over signal. So if I uh, go into the panel and uh, let's see if we can get that to display there. Oh, actually, uh, it's probably because we haven't added the game over panel to the UI. So let's look for game over panel on the file system and just drop it under UI. And we want to make sure that that stretches the whole screen and game over UI the scene. Uh, it's set to full vect. So let's make sure it's full vect inside of the uh, UI as well. So this should be full vect. So maybe the UI above it is not full vect. So UI full vect and then game over, full vect. I'd show, because the panel also needs to stretch to full vect. So this panel layout, anchors, and then full vect. Okay, there. Now that should be good. Yep, okay, we can hit play now, we'll get hit twice, and then it's gonna show the game over panel, which means that our screen just turns black. Now uh, that, is not super helpful because it doesn't really show much of what we need it to show. So let's jump into the game over UI and I'll add a, let's say rich text label and I'm going to center it. So under layout, we go to layout mode, anchors, center, and I'm going to just say game over in the text. And uh, let's expand this box a bit. I'll recenter it. And I also want to center the text. Let's do BB code enabled. That way we can add some effects to this. Um, okay, maybe we don't want the size to be increased. Uh, I'll just reset that and reset the size. Let's see, fit content. Okay, so let's resize this to be the size we actually need it to be. In uh, the rich text label properties, there's markup, custom effects. So we can add one in here. Let's do new rich text effect. Okay, let's expand the box and go to gameplay. We want to make sure it actually fits the screen when it's showing in game. So just expand it to what it needs to be. So that we have our game over. Okay, I'm going to see if we can just paste the BB code to get it to work. So with BB code enabled, I'm just going to put this in. Okay, so we add a wave effect. So you could just kind of copy and paste this as is. I'm basically pulling right off of the Godot wiki on BB code. So if we want that effect to end, we might also want to do a slash dot slash wave. Um, not really necessary, but otherwise this would apply to any other text we add after it. So you, so you can see after the slash wave, it stops applying. Uh, we can also do rainbow. So let me put that in. Once again, I'm just copy and pasting. So we got to have the left square bracket rainbow and then at the end we can do slash rainbow now now putting a rainbow in a one bit game is kind of like not really staying on theme but whatever i think that works as a pretty cool game over screen anyway so let's hit play and we'll get hit a couple times so we got our game over. Uh, I could stand to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take the game over UI here and I'm actually going to add a custom theme for the font, uh, font size, we'll say 48. Okay, um, now this basically stacks with the original theme. So the original theme applies the, uh, the font, as you can see there. And then this only changes the font size, I believe. Okay, so we got to stretch this to be big enough and hit play. So we get hit twice. There's our game over. Okay, maybe we even need it to be a little bit bigger. I'll make it 96 and uh, let's just preload the font. Nah, let's not. Uh, just in case we change the font later on. Okay, so one, two, we got our game over. We do wanna make sure we center it in the screen too. So let's make sure that that is in the center. And I think what we have to do to make sure it's centered is check the anchors or something. No, 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 no. We need to um, adjust the text position. So I think we can do that with uh, BB code as well. So I'm going to do center code and then we can have a slash center over here. Feels like I'm writing a form post from back in the day, all those BB code forms. And is there a vertical, a vertical centering? 
I guess the thing to do for that would just be move it down a little bit. And on gameplay, it's kind of centered, good enough, right? One, two, and then we get our game over screen. But we might want to have like a fading animation for that turning on. Let's actually create an animation player. If we add an animation player child node, then instead of showing the panel directly, we could just play the show animation. So go to uh, animation new, uh, show, and this is gonna take the panel. Mm, so let's see, property track on the panel, which is gonna be like the visibility. So we want self, oh wait, not self modulate, modulate track on the, so, pop, so property track on the panel, modulate, okay. And let's just make it a one second animation. So we start at 0% alpha and we end at 100% alpha. Might need to zoom in and make sure that we set these keyframes, right? So it should be zero and 1.0. And then this goes to 100% um, alpha if I hit play. Okay, yeah, there you can see we have like our fade in. So in the game over UI, so instead of just showing and hiding, we also wanna play the animation. So if we do at export var, uh, animation player, up type animation player, then we'll just do animation player dot play. And we're looking for the show animation. Okay, uh, we need to assign the animation player and that should probably be good to go. Let's get hit twice. And now we get a fade in for our game over. Cool, that actually worked pretty nicely. Let's see. So we do need a button to, uh, to restart the game. So I'm gonna right click on the game over UI. We'll add in a button. We wanna position it under the game over. So let's do a VBox, add child node, a VBox container, position rich text node on top and add the button under it. Okay, gotta make sure the VBox container stretches to the whole thing. So in layout, Layout mode anchors, full rect. And where did my text label go? Expand vertical, I guess. Uh-huh. And I guess this should actually be center. Okay, now I want to make sure it stretches to the child contents. Or we can just expand it kind of like this, I guess. Move it down a bit. Uh, where's the button? Okay, these uh, anchors need to be adjusted too. Okay, so we need our button to be below that, kind of in the center. Let's say restart, and we can position that there. So our restart button, uh, I wanna attach a script to it to tell it what scene to load. So let's uh, add a restart game button script in UI. So we're gonna at export var uh, restart scene, which is a pecked scene. This is gonna be the gameplay. So if we quick load from our project, if we find gameplay.tscn, then uh, we can completely restart the game. Now there might be some game worlds where instead of completely restarting all the systems, like I'm doing right now, just going for a new game, uh, that you would instead load the world again, or you would load the level within the world, or you would load a save file. But this is just probably the simplest way to get started. So just keep in mind that you don't have to completely restart the game. You could just restart the level or load the contents of the same level or move your character to a save point, that kind of thing. So we're going to just tell the scene tree to change the scenes though. So function uh, on pressed, we're going to take the tree, so get the scene tree and then we're going to switch to scenes let's see change scene to file change scene to packed i think that's what we want which is restart scene so that's going to completely restart our gameplay scene it's going to restart the whole game and the last thing we need to do is connect to that pressed signal so function underscore ready we're going to do pressed dot connect on pressed and that's pretty much it so when the, when the button is pressed, we change the scene to the restart scene, which is the gameplay. And I'm gonna rename this button, restart game button. So we hit save, I get hit a couple times, and then I'm gonna hit restart. Okay, it did not work as intended. And also this is supposed to hide initially, so I forgot to put it onto the panel. So let's do that. And now I'll hit play again. We get hit a couple times. There's our button, we can restart. Let's see what the debugger says. I can't change to a null scene. Use unload current scene if you wish to unload it. 
So that's interesting. Uh, let's do the unpressed, I'll hit play, and we'll see if it is in fact a null when we get to that point. So I'm gonna restart, and yes, it is null. Okay, um, let me try one more thing. Maybe it's because it's being loaded from within the parent scene. So I'll try a file path here. So this is gonna be a string. We'll do export file. And then instead of change scene to packed, we'll do change scene to file. Put in the restart scene. And then we just put the path to the gameplay TSCN inside of here. Sometimes packed scenes are a little bit screwy, so we'll see if this works. So it does seem to be set in the inspector. If we do restart, oh, okay, there we go. We got that to load up. As you can see, the uh, the player deaths are still there. If we were to shoot enemies, I believe that statistic would also still uh, be there as well. So there's a couple issues we need to work out. So if we want to reset the number of enemies that died whenever the gameplay reloads, uh, we could do that. So I might add a script to gameplay, and then we'll reference the combat state, combat state. Uh, and just as an FYI, normally you would probably do this when you load the data, you just set the values. So like you load a new game and you set the values on load. So we could just say quick load here, and maybe we say uh, function new game, and we say combat state uh, dot enemies died equals zero. So we'll say function underscore ready, but I'm gonna keep the player death count the same uh, so that even when we restart, we know how many times the players died. Okay, last thing, the window here, when it's not visible, it's blocking the mouse input. So if you go and you hit play and you try left clicking to shoot, you'll see that it's not working because it's being blocked by the UI. So for the game over UI, let's jump into that. I'm gonna click here. We want mouse to be changed to pass. And we wanna make sure that the panel also is like that. So mouse uh, pass. That means that even if you click here, the mouse actions can still pass through it. And under the rich text label, mouse should be pass as well. Yeah, we'll make that pass. But not for the game restart button, I think. So I'll hit play. Okay, we can't shoot still. Is the UI itself blocking it? Yes, it is. Okay, so uh, let's make that pass. Now we hit play, we can shoot again. Yep, even if we're kind of in the middle here where the uh, button is invisible. So if we get hit a couple times, our character would die. And then now we can hit the restart button. You'll see enemy slain restarted, but the player death count is still there. We can restart. Yep, okay, we get our health back, so it takes two hits. And that's looking pretty much as we want it to be for the game over screen. Yeah, so we have a player death count and an enemy slain count that restarts whenever the game restarts. So, a uh, pretty simplistic way of handling things. Obviously, with the new game thing, th this would probably become a save and load data, or you can call new game if you want to restart the stats. But normally, I guess that would be from a main menu. I guess it's not really that different from what we just did, having the restart button there. But just keep in mind that like there's different ways of doing this, and you might need to adapt it a bit for your game. But uh, that is pretty much the gist of having a game over screen, restarting the enemy's death count, and making sure that your UI does not block your mouse input so you can still uh, interact with the character.